We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Mm. Well, some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. He's coming after you and me. Joy's ours to share. Well, what rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. They're headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Well, oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting. Well, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Hallelujah. Well, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Well, it seems that now I almost see all the sainted dead. They're rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. Well, in the twinkling of an eye, change with it will be. All the living saints to fly to that jubilee. Well, oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. Well, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah. Well, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Oh, and when with all the heavenly host we begin to sing. We're singing in the Holy Ghost how the heavens will ring. And millions there will join that song. With them we shall be praising Christ through ages long. Heaven's jubilee. Well, oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting. Well, on that happy morning. When we all shall rise, oh, well, hallelujah, well, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky, well, oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, yes, on that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, well, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Well, it seems that now I almost see all the sainted dead. They're rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. Well, in the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be. All the living saints to fly to that jubilee. Well, oh, well, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, well, hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Well, when with all the saints dead, we begin to sing. We're singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join that song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, well, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the home of time. Well, oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all gonna rise. Oh, well, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Hallelujah, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's enter in and worship the Lord together this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we lift our hands today? Hallelujah, God. We thank you that all of our hope is in you, Lord God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. I've been held by the Savior. I felt fire from above I've been down to the river A prodigal, a prodigal return No, and all my hope is in Jesus Thank God
to praise God about to know that all of our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of our sins are forgiven. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not Sweetest rain, but holy trust in Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every me
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest phrase, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, Can we give him some praise today? Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah that you're Lord of all. You're Lord of every situation. Every situation. God, we praise you. We thank you, Lord. Wonderful. 
beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore me. Silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no It's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, chapters of Psalms 91. It says, verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His shield 
or his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I want to tell you this morning, I was thinking about the song we were singing about the wonderful name of Jesus. And I think as believers, we often take for granted the power that comes with the name of Jesus. I've said this before, and, and, and I apologize. It's just, it, it just filled this in my heart this morning as we were worshiping about the importance of knowing the name of Jesus. See, in Psalms 91, that first, first verse, it talks about the one that dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The old scholars tell you, they, they say that, that the shadow is retur- referring to the tent or the dwelling place. It's powerful right there. He that dwells or in the secret place of the Most High, he, dwell, he abides in the presence of the Almighty. Praise God. Aren't you want, don't you want this morning to dwell in the presence of Almighty God? Isn't that what our heart's desire is as children of God? To dwell, to live in the presence of Almighty God? But it goes further than that. It goes further than that. The scholars say that not only is the shadow of the Almighty the tent or the dwelling place, the presence, but it says that the custom, the old custom was that if you came upon someone's dwelling place and you were, you were running away from somebody, somebody was going to get you. That if you came to somebody's dwelling place, if you knew the owner of the tent, if you knew the head of the household, if you knew their name, then what you, all you had to do was say the name of the head of the household and it says, custom said that if you knew that name, that you were entitled to all of the protection that the owner of the house could offer. You were entitled to all the provisions. You were able to sit down at his table and and eat of his food, and his goats were your goats, and anything and everything that was his now belonged to you all because you knew the name of the head of the house. And what David is saying here in this passage of Scripture He's saying that if you know the name of the Almighty, the Most High, then everything that's His, you're entitled to. All the protection is yours. All the provision is yours. Every goat that's His is yours. Every weapon that's His is yours. And no matter what the enemy may come against you, can I tell you this morning, amen, we serve a God that's greater. And if we're in His house and we're under His protection, amen, there is no devil in hell that can stop us. Amen, there is no attack of the enemy that can come uh, can defeat us because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world and it all becomes ours just simply by knowing the name of Jesus so you say well what's the significance it's, it's quite significant knowing the name of Jesus I mean, how many has ever been there in a time of need and all you could say was the name of Jesus and peace can pass your soul? How many of those times where provisions were, 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 were short and money was tight and all you could say was the name of Jesus and somebody showed up with groceries on the door? I'm telling you this morning, all you've got to know is the name of Jesus and every need that you have will be supplied. Amen. Every, every problem you face, He is the solution. Why? Because He is the great I am whatever you have need of this morning I want you to know we serve a God that's able hallelujah we serve a God can I tell somebody this morning we serve a God that's able if you got a need in your life this morning I want you to lift your hand all across the building we're going to take our needs to the Lord in prayer and we're going to pray in faith knowing and believing that our God is able come on lift your hands and your voices this morning let's begin to take our cares and our petition to him God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Jesus, we thank you. Oh, that there's power in your name. There's power to save. There's power to heal. There's power to deliver. God, there's power of provision, power of protection, all in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. God, there's people this morning so overwhelmed, so overtaken, God, by burdens and weights that all they can say is Jesus. Come on, if that's you, I want you to just cry out the name Jesus. Jesus, we need you this morning. Jesus, our families need you this morning. Jesus, our nation needs you this morning. Jesus, our nation needs you this morning. Jesus, our church needs you today. Hallelujah, we need you today. We need you today. God, we pray for each and every need represented today. We pray for every financial need, God. We pray for blessing and provision. God, for every sick body in this place, we pray healing and, and, and restoration over them this morning. God, we pray for broken families. Lord, we pray you put the pieces back together today. Lord, let glory be brought to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many is glad to know we serve a God that's able this morning? Can you give him a hand clap of praise today if you know that he's able? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. So good to see each and every one of you here in service with us today. Amen. I, I'd like to say it's good to have our pastor back, and I know... Everyone else is glad too. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad he get, didn't come home empty handed. Hallelujah. He would have been a bear to work with for a while. Uh, <laughs> praise God. That or he would have blamed it on his gun for a few months. Uh, but uh, anyways, good, good to have him back. Good to see you here today. Our ushers are coming this morning to receive our tithe and offering as they are. want to remind you of a few things that we have coming up this this month on the 23rd, uh, this is Thanksgiving week, and uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to some time with family, and uh, I did send a personal note to Dr. Fauci and let him know how many attendees would be at my house Thursday. Uh, I haven't heard back from him yet. Uh, I think I'm over the limit, but uh, <laughs> that's just my family. Uh, anyways, no, I hope you have a great time. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to get in trouble. I hope you have a great time with your family uh, this week. I uh, want to remind you, instead of Wednesday night service this week, we'll meet here Tuesday night. Uh, it'll be a family service, everyone here in the sanctuary. And so I encourage you to come and be a part of that. And then also on the 30th uh, is a, a sisterhood craft night at 630 here in the fellowship hall. And so I want to encourage all of our ladies to come and be a part of that. And just, just uh, keep yourself aware of all that's coming up. Uh, grab a bulletin in the back, uh, in the foyer as you leave. And uh, keep yourself up to date. And uh, know that we, we love you and we're glad to see you this morning. Amen. How many is glad to be here today? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning for our tithe and offering. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here today. We thank you for your presence. God, we thank you that in, under the name of Jesus there is power to save, to heal, to deliver. And God, we call upon that name this morning. Pray that your spirit be poured out in this place. Lord, for our offering and our tithes today, we pray you bless the gift and the giver. Let every need be supplied and let glory be brought to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God worship. God bless you as you worship in giving this morning. We've come to praise Him. We've come to praise Him. We've come to praise Him and live His holy name. We've come to praise Him. We've come to praise Him. We've come to praise Him. Joyful noise unto the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that's what we've come for, why don't we go ahead and do it this morning? We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Where we come to praise Him. Oh, we come to praise Him. Oh, we come to praise Him. Lift His holy name. Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing one more chorus. I was glad when they said to me, let's go in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Why don't we stand one more time? We're going to get in the Word in just a minute. And I've already made up my mind before I got here this morning that I was going to have a good time at church, okay? I'm not trying to fill things out. Stay with me just a second. I'm not trying to figure out if somebody's upset or somebody's had a bad week and trying to fill it out and tiptoe around. No, I've come to praise Him. I've come to exalt him. He's God. He's sovereign. He's still in control. He's still worthy of praise, honor, and glory. And we're going to worship him. Let's sing this old chord. I was glad when they said unto me. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me. Well, I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Well, I was glad when they said unto me. Yeah, I was glad when they said unto me. Oh, I was glad when they said to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me. Yes, I was glad when they said unto me. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me. Let's go into Oh, I was glad when they said unto me. Yes, I was glad when they said unto me. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me. Let's go into the house. Of the Lord. One more time, give him praise. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. And uh, again, I echo what Brother Nathan has already said. We invite you again this afternoon at 6 o'clock to be here, be a part of what God is going to do in our worship service tonight. And then on Tuesday, between uh, 7 and 8 o'clock on Tuesday, we are going to come together for a time of thanksgiving, and we're going to have communion together, and uh, not going to be a, a, a lengthy service, but I encourage you to come, bring your family, let's take some time and be grateful 
and show thanksgiving for the faithfulness and the goodness of an almighty God. Listen to me. Everything that you have comes from God. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, with whom is no bearableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will, he begotted us with a word of truth. He's a good God, and he loves us. At this moment, those of you who normally attend children's church, I think it's age fifth grade. And what is I'm sorry. First to fifth, you may be dismissed very quietly and orderly. Sometimes we do this, and I see a lot of adults getting up, but thank you for Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving. This morning I am thankful for the privilege of pastoring what I believe to be one of the greatest churches on the planet. Amen? God's been good to us. God's been good to Northside. And uh, we don't take lightly His mercy, nor your faithfulness and your generosity to the work of God. And uh, it's always nice to get away for a while, and, uh, but it's even better to come back home. And uh, glad to have mom and daddy back home and, and different ones that have been away. Others are, are enjoying their Thanksgiving break and uh, had a great time in Nebraska. And, uh, you know, preaching sometimes is like hunting. Every message has a target. If you don't hit it on the first shot, just shoot again. Amen. And if you're Brother Nick, you just keep on shooting. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not even in here, but you just keep shooting until you get the job done. So uh, um, that's what I intend to do this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and uh, don't try to guess when the second and third shot's going off, okay? Just, just stay put. And... Uh, I believe God has a word for us this morning. Amen. I was in my late 20s or early, early 30s, the first time I had the privilege of going on a missions trip out of the country. I had the privilege of traveling with what I believe to be one of the greatest missionaries that the Assemblies of God has ever had serve our fellowship. His name was Reverend Robert Holmes. My brother Holmes was a man of God. He was a man who gave his life to teaching scripture and he gave his life to the people of Nigeria. He spent 13 years, he moved his family to that country and traveled abroad, traveled internationally there in Nigeria and did an incredible work. And I had the privilege of going with him what turned, on what turned out to be his final trip because he went to be with the Lord a few months after our trip. And I'll never forget the first night when we landed there, uh, getting off the airplane and, 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 and going, leaving the, the airport in Lagos, Nigeria, and going and, uh, and, and, and just the sheer numbers of people, just, uh, it, it was night, it was, it was dark outside, and I would have assumed that the streets would have been bare, but there were people just moving and, and migrating back and forth, and, and, uh, and I still remember as we got to the guest house, we had the privilege of staying in a, in a decent facility there, but we got to this guest house, and, and either that evening or the next evening, Brother Holmes gave the lady that ran the guest house, he gave her what is just a, a, a cheap, inexpensive, carry-on piece of luggage. And you would have thought that he had given her a million dollars. She was so grateful, and she was so thankful. So they had absolute, turn me down just a little bit somewhere, I'm echoing some. And uh, such, a, such a grateful, thankful heart. I remember the day that, it, just a day or two later, uh, I began to get comfortable there, and, and we, were, we were traveling, and, and I still remember going to, uh, we, we, I, we may have been in, in Lake, Lagos or Abuja, I can't remember exactly which city we were in, but I remember as we traveled, um, the, the, the police in that particular city uh, were not fortunate enough to have vehicles. They would stand on the side of the road. If they saw a, a traffic infraction, they would wave you over, and for some reason, they waved us over. They stopped us and, and they asked everyone for their papers and I had failed to bring my passport along. I encourage you, if you travel abroad, please take your passport with you. It's advisable to have on your person. And, but that day I didn't and for some reason I just left it at the, at the guest house and, and I still remember the gentleman looking into the back seat of the car where I was seated and he said, 
with a perplexed look on his face. He asked Brother Holmes, he looked at him, and he said, what should I do with this man? What should I do? I mean, in a, in a disturbed tone of voice. And Brother Holmes, never missing a beat, looked back at him and said, what do you mean, what should I do with this man? This man is in your country to help you and to help your people. You should leave him alone and stop harassing him. Amen. I said, hallelujah. And that officer looked at both of us, and he said, okay, and, and waved us on. Amen. Amen. I was thankful to be traveling with Brother Holmes. Amen. Amen. And I wish I could say this morning, that's a long story to say this, I wish I could say that after leaving Nigeria, I never again complained about how bad I had it. I wish I could say that, that, uh, that, that, that I never ever uh, uh, took for granted some of the blessings that we have, but that would not be, that would not, uh, uh, be, be truthful this morning. But friends, I just have come today to remind us, I want us to help us somehow discover the power of a heart of gratitude. It's more important than you can imagine. I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 1. In verse 21, Romans chapter 1 and verse 21 is where part of our text will come from today. And uh, again, I've got more than one bullet up here, so just be patient. Amen. If we don't hit first, I'll, I'll, I'll grab another one and keep on shooting, okay? Hallelujah. Romans 1, 20, those of you that are listening, we just got back from a hunting trip. That's what we're talking about, okay? All right. Romans 1, 21. Listen to what it says. Because that when they knew God, stop right there for one second. I was reading this text, and Paul is writing from Corinth. He's writing to a group of people, a church that he's never visited yet. He was writing to the church in, in, in Rome. And he said that when they knew God, and I read that, and I keep reading it, and I, in, in my Bible, in the divisions, it kind of tells what the following text is about. Anybody, your Bible, does, does it do that? Mine does. It talks about that this passage was referring to Gentiles. So I begin to think, Gentiles knew about God, and because they did not honor Him as God, these things happen that we'll read about here in just a little bit. And so I began to dig on it and, and, and dig it up a little bit, and uh, it kind of troubled me. But I finally, finally came across a, a, a commentary that, that just a little sentence, it said that they knew enough about God. So if these Gentiles that Paul is writing to in, in, in the book of Romans, if they knew enough about God, to be thankful, where does that put us today? If they knew just because, read the previous verses, it talked about uh, uh, the God that reveals himself through nature. I had to do a paper years ago, and, and uh, 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 part of that paper I had to uh, dig in, and, and, and early missionaries, before the gospel had ever reached certain tribes, they found indigenous people groups that were worshiping God to the best of their ability. Because nature, the sun, the moon, the, 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 the things that they could see revealed to them that there is a God in heaven. And friends, if they knew enough about God to be grateful, I believe you and I who have the 66 books of the Bible, we ought to be people with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving to an almighty God. Hallelujah. Let's look on down here. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to the corruptible man and to the birds and to the four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, 
who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. I want to preach again just, I just, just for a little while today on making a choice to be thankful. Choose to be thankful. Last week of the seventh, not last week, I wasn't here last Sunday, but, but a week, you know, I was just getting ready to start preaching against hunting on, 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 on Sunday. Then I realized where I was last week and I changed my notes. Oh, man. Hallelujah. I just, I just threw those papers right in the trash can. Amen. Amen. I preached on the seventh. We did go to church, though. Anyway. I preached on the seventh about how to avoid and dealing with the coldness that's, that's, that seemingly is is overtaking our land. How many of you would agree? Jesus said, because the love of many would lack cold, that, 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 that this coldness would come. And we are, we're dealing with that and we're seeing it. And I want I to somewhat maybe a part two of that message here this morning because if we allow coldness to settle in, the second part of coldness is when I get cold and you get cold enough, you become numb to the coldness. Get numb and, and we lose our sensitivity and, and it can be cold and we don't even realize that it's cold. And, and friends, as the church of Jesus Christ, we can't afford to let coldness settle in. Can I get an amen in this place this morning? So we're going to choose to be thankful. We are going to cultivate a thankful heart. Hallelujah. I'm convinced that coldness settles in the life of the believer when we forget that we are here, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, we are not here just for ourselves, but we are here for others. Amen? Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, verse 23, it tells us to guard our heart. Mark chapter 4, it gives us the parable of the sower or the parable of the soil. And so today I'm going to try to help us to learn and, 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 and just simply remind us of a choice that we've got to make to keep our heart to cultivate a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving. Listen, I could go, I could have heart issues this morning. Stay with me. And I could go to the doctor, and I, they could some, for some reason, they could, they could place in my heart. We had a brother that attended a few, few months ago that, that shared with me that he had had a heart transplant. It's not uncommon now for, for different organs to be transplanted. How many of you are aware of that? But if I don't change the process that caused my last heart to go bad, let's just make it simple. If I keep eating the junk that I was eating and living the lifestyle that I lived, when the new heart comes in, it's not going to be long because the habits haven't changed or I haven't adjusted the things that I do. Is everybody with me? I'm telling us as Christians, we have received, if any man is in Christ, He's a new creation. We've had a mind transplant. We had a heart transplant. Hallelujah. But I can't continue to live a lifestyle that I lived before. Amen. I can't afford to act the same way. I can't afford to live that same life. Ezekiel 36, 26 says that it takes out that stony heart and gives us a new heart. The same is, is not just with our heart, but it's true with our mind. What can we do? I want to share just a few things today. The first thing that we've got to deal with, we've got to understand that ungratefulness is a slippery, slippery slope. Stay with me. Preacher, I, I'm thankful. Uh, just stay with me for a while. I'm not here to condemn or beat anyone, but I'm saying all of us, if we aren't cautious, if we don't use extreme caution, we can fall into an attitude of ungratefulness. If you have your Bible there, I want you to turn with me over to the book of Luke. Let's look over to Luke chapter number 12. Jesus gives a parable of a rich fool is what the Bible says, what my Bible calls it there, the caption above the text. In verse 13, it says, And one of the companies said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Listen, an ungrateful heart is always concerned 
with what other people have. An ungrateful heart is always concerned, and you know, it's, it's in all of us. You know what? I struggle even in the checkout line when the line next to me is going faster than the line I'm in. That's unfair. Can I get an amen this morning? If I pull up to a red light, I, or if I'm in traffic, if I get stuck in traffic, if I get in the left lane, let me tell you what's going to happen. The left lane is coming to a dead stop. And that car that was behind me is now 10 cars in front of me. And that's not right. Amen? That is frustrating. It's something that is ingrained. I wish I could tell you that in moments like that, Brother Michael, I sit in my car and I say, God, you've been so good to me. I have a vehicle to drive. I have a place to go. I have fuel to get there. But let me be honest, that's not what happens. Amen? Hallelujah. An ungrateful heart is always concerned with what others have. This man, we don't have his name, but he was concerned. He was, he was bringing Jesus in to a family dispute. Word of, word of knowledge right here as we go to Thanksgiving lunch. Just, you know, let some stuff slide, okay? If it's over 50 years ago, it's probably not worth discussing this week. Can I? If it's a year or so ago, it's probably not even worth discussing. If it was last week, let it go. That's good preaching, Brother Smith. Not even in my notes. That's just extra. He felt that for some reason he wasn't getting his part. Something he had not been treated fairly. I've said it before. I've known people, by the way, that, that hadn't spoken to family members in years because that rocker, that mama had was supposed to have been mine. Everybody knew it. Y'all are being quiet this morning. That just means I need to bear down. It's supposed to have been mine, and everybody in the family knew it. You know, Aunt so and so, she just took that thing. She doesn't appreciate it a bit. Got it in her garage. And then, friend, let me tell you something now. I'm saying a grateful heart is not nearly as concerned about what others have or what others don't have you know what friends let me remind you from the beginning of this message God has been incredibly good to us you have it better than 90 plus percent of the rest of this globe we have every reason this morning to give God praise and worship him he's a good God and an ungrateful heart is concerned that somebody is doing better or somebody has a nicer car. And I'm going to get ahead of myself. But you know, there's been times, if we're not careful, we pull up beside somebody and we glance over and they got some really nice car. And, and if we're not careful, we think, man, they, they got to be in debt up to their eyeballs. <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't no way they can afford that. <laughs> Amen. Or if they're driving a piece of junk, then, man, they should. Surely they drive something better than that. You know what? I'm just going to talk to you. I didn't get to preach last week, so hang with me. Friends, we must cultivate a grateful heart. If you've got a pocket full of money, I praise God with you. If you're struggling to figure out how it's all going to come together, I'm going to pray with you because God is faithful and God is good and I'm going to work on cultivating a heart that is thankful. If you have a big spread on Thursday, thank God. If you're there by yourself, God is still faithful and He's still merciful and He's good to us. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Bible times, it was said that the younger brother was given a third while the older brother was given two thirds. You can look at the story of Jacob and Esau and Jesus. This, this brother had come to Jesus and he was trying, he was trying to bring Jesus into this squabble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God help us today. God help us to be grateful and not allow ungrateful because once it takes root, Jesus, what did he do? Let's look down to verse number 15. It says, and he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. Jesus went straight to the heart of the issue. 
Jesus didn't mess around. Jesus went right straight to it. He said, what did he say? He said, take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possessed. I share with you and I remind you this morning, again, you may have come in with a nice ride and you may have left a fine home or you may have come from a less desirable place. You may have ridden the van or you may have walked this morning. I'm telling you, we can cultivate a grateful heart no matter where we are or what our circumstances are. God is good. I said God is good. Lest I misunderstood, I want to say this. There is nothing wrong with having things. As long as things don't have you. He doesn't care. I don't believe God. I don't, I don't believe he said, well, they're doing too good. We're going to cut them off and make things lean a little bit. No. I don't think he, I don't think he it, it matters to him how much stuff you have. He cares about how much stuff has you. Verse 18. He said, and this will I do. He tells the story of this, of this rich. He said, I will tear down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all the fruits of my goods. What was he saying? This guy was saying, listen, I've got enough, but you know what? Enough is not enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Verse number 18. He said, I'll tear it down. The problem with the man was greediness. Is everybody still here? Nothing wrong with being blessed. Don't leave here saying the preacher said we shouldn't be there. There is nothing wrong with being blessed. The Bible says in Proverbs 3 verse 9, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. What's the, re what's the result? So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. What is he saying? He's saying if we'll put God first, if we'll honor him, God will bless and God will honor. You can bank on it this morning. Put God first. Let me just step out here a little bit and talk about tithing for a minute. I encourage you. I read a book about, oh, it's been probably 10, 12 years ago now, 8 to 10 years ago, uh, uh, called The Blessed Life by a preacher by the name of Robert Morris. I don't know if you've ever heard Robert Morris preach. Uh, but Robert Morris wrote a book called The Blessed Life. If you've not read that book, I encourage you to do so. I never plug books, but I'm plugging this one. He talks about the principle of first fruits in this book. And he talks about tithe being the first fruit. Not just any hundred. If you have ten $100 bills. If you have $1,000 in your wallet today, uh, we'll visit after church, okay? No, not really. Uh, uh, the first hundred, not the last, goes to God. The first fruits. Not just any of them, not just, it, let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you what my experience has been. If I wait till any other point besides the first, there's not enough left after I get through. Maybe you're a better manager than I am. God bless you if you are. I'm just saying it's the first fruits that belong to God. And if we will honor God, God will honor his word. Amen. Amen. That's all lecture. That's not even my notes either. You cannot outgive God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And friends, I remind you today, we are not defined by what we, ha by what we have or by what we don't have. Hallelujah. You are not more of a man or less than because of what you have or what you don't have. My question is how do you treat your family? How do you treat those around you? Don't get quiet on me. How do we treat those that we work with? Do we show the love of Christ? Do we show kindness? Do we honor? Amen. I don't care. I mean, God, what, what you have or don't have is not the issue. The issue is how is the love of Christ flowing through us. Hallelujah. Listen, the next thing I want us to look at is that God is looking for people to bless. I believe that this morning. Stay with me. It'll get better here in just a second. God is looking for people that he can bless who will be good stewards, 
that he can flow through. There's missionaries to be sent. And I have good news this morning. With the help of God, Northside is doing more than I can honestly say we've probably ever done in the history of this church. Hallelujah. God's blessing. And if, you know what? How do we do? You know, it comes as God blesses and as we put God first and as we honor Him. There's missionaries to be sent. There are people to be fed. There are churches to be built. He's saying it's okay to be blessed. You can keep the 90%. Just give me what is mine. God's looking for people that He can trust to be a channel of His blessing. And I will add this in. Listen to me, Northside. Don't buy in to a spirit of poverty. Don't do it. Don't do it. And don't feel guilty if you've been blessed. Stay with me. Give me a few more minutes. Listen, I cannot afford to buy into a, 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 a spirit of, uh, of, of, well, I just don't have nothing and never going to have anything. No, God is able to bless the spirit of greed says that stuff comes from, from hard work and, and look what I've done while a spirit of poverty said I shouldn't be ashamed of what I had. Somebody, I, I've, I've seen it before, somebody brags on what you have and, and uh, you feel ashamed and you have to try to tell them that you got it on sale. You know what, if something, just say thank you. You don't have to tell them you got it at, at the goodwill. Come on now. Well, I got, the, well, somebody, I got a good deal on that, don't... No, no, God is a God who's able to bless. And he wants to bless. Amen. He's a good, good father. Amen. And listen, God never speaks through guilt of, 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 of condemnation. He speaks through conviction. And I've said it already. God has been good to us. Not so we can develop a spirit of pride. Pride says, I've earned everything that I've got. A spirit of, of, of gratitude says, thank you, Lord, because you have blessed me. Thank you that I have a job. Thank you that I've got a car to drop. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God help us. God help us to be, have a heart of gratitude. A spirit of gratitude again says, thank you, God. You have been faithful to us. And as we are in this Thanksgiving season, and this week we will pause and celebrate Thanksgiving. It always stirs a question in my mind. I don't know if you've ever dealt with it, but there's a question that I, that I sometimes have to deal with, and that is why do we face difficulty? Why difficulty? God is good. Brother Nathan quoted the scripture, read the scripture earlier in the service. I read that, and then sometimes, Brother Michael, I have to balance it with some of the things that I deal with and some of the people that I pray for and some of the circumstances that people in this church are dealing with this morning. And I stand before you, and I will admit that I don't have every single answer to every question that we can ask. I look across and I see places where people ought to be seated in my mind. But instead of here, they are sick and they're dealing with things that if it were up to me, it would already be over, past and done. But at the end of the day, I simply choose to trust God and know that God is ultimately working all things together for the good of those that love Him, to those that are called according to His purpose. I will not allow... a Somebody help me right now. I'm not going to allow a little disappointment get me to doubt all that God has done and how faithful God has been to us. We're going to hold on to Him. We're going to keep trusting Him. Sometimes God allows things, but let me say this. In light of that, God never allows anything in your life to destroy you. Could it be, I'm not, I'm not saying this is what it is, but could it be to reveal to us our heart? Could it be to let us see what's going on? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, it says, All the commandments which I commanded this day shall you observe 
to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what is in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. You still here? I said, are you still here this morning? Amen. God, what oh, musicians come? God, what are you showing me? God, what, what, if, if you're going through something this morning, listen to me. If you're going through something, ask the question, God, what is it you're trying to show me? What is it that, Lord, my heart is, is pure before you? And then the next thing I encourage you to do, if you're struggling today, I encourage you to make this declaration. God, I'm going to serve you. No matter what, I may not be able to control what happens to me but with the help of God I can control how I respond to what's going on in my life I may not be able to keep it from happening but with the help of God I can control how I respond I can control my attitude that I have I may not like the junk or the sickness that I'm dealing with I may not like the stuff that I'm having to go through but I can respond with a heart like Job said he said though he slay me I'm still going to trust him he said I look in front I look behind and I don't even see where God is there's one thing I remind you that in seasons where you can't see where he is trust him to know that he knows exactly where you are hallelujah I said God knows exactly where you are this morning he wants us to remember his goodness because if we're not careful when we face rough waters we can forget all that God's done is everybody still here if I'm not careful before the sun goes down tonight one phone call let's just break it down and be honest I don't even have to have a phone call sister Richie I can have thoughts start creeping into my mind I can manufacture stuff don't look at me like that y'all do the same thing we start man before long it's bigger than life but I choose to be thankful I choose to be grateful I choose to remember the goodness of God when the children of Israel when they were given the instructions about Passover there was part of that that was that they, there were these bitter herbs that they were to to eat and and uh, someone said scholars have said that it was to remind them of what it was like in Egypt because if we fail to remember what it was like before we were saved give me a couple of minutes when the pressures come and discouragement comes and disappointment comes there's a temptation to go back to Egypt friends I remind you 2021 we've been through a lot of stuff in the last 18 months but God has been faithful Sister Wyma, God will remain faithful this morning. God is good. Each morning I pray over a list. And it seemed like there's just several ladies on that list. People that we know that are struggling with, with, with sickness. God is still faithful. And He is good and he's faithful and my worst day serving God is better than the best day serving the devil yes. hallelujah I said our worst day sickness whatever it is discouragement depression that tries to creep in if we can somehow say you know what I make a choice I'm going to remember the goodness of God. I'm going to remember where I could be were it not for the mercy of God. I want you to stand to your feet with me this morning. I know you may be struggling. I'm not saying that everything's perfect in any of our lives.
But I am saying that we serve a perfect God, a God that loves us, a God that cares for us. And I'm going to invite you with me to lift both hands into the air. And could we just give him praise and thank him for his faithfulness. Father, we make a choice today. We make a choice this week in spite of everything that's going on in our lives personally, in spite of what's going on in this world. You're still God. You're still in control. And we love you and we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We bless your name, Jesus. We worship you today, Lord. How, come on, give me praise. Press in just a minute. Oh, God, we praise you today. Oh, God, you're faithful. You're merciful, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think about, think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me.